a fascinating debate there in the British Parliament. The Murdochs want the world to believe that the news of the world ran itself, that as bosses they knew nothing of what was going on. Grilled for over two hours by Britain's lawmakers, the father and son duo shifted the entire blame on people they trusted. However, the act of ignorance has failed to cut ice with the world. If at all, it spurred a new outpouring of outrage. Well, I would like to say as well just how sorry I am and how sorry we are uh, to particularly the victims of illegal voicemail interceptions. People I trusted, I'm not saying who, I don't know what level, but let me down and I think they behaved uh, disgracefully and betrayed the company and me. The Murdochs playing victim, dealing in monosyllables, trying hard to convince the world they are innocent. Unfortunately, Mr. Murdoch, the world is still angry. I think it's disgusting. You know, when you're rich and powerful, media mogul like that, you think you can get away with anything. You think you can buy anything. Access to uh, voicemail, access to police, bypass the laws. Have you considered suing Harbour and Lewis? Whether well, any news corporation company is a subject of an investigation by the serious fraud office. Why was no one fired in April? News International executives and... After five hours of the intense grilling, the world was asking if the Murdochs don't know what is happening in their organization, should they be heading it? Just about everybody that was a witness saying they didn't know very much, it wasn't their fault, it was somebody else's fault. Which of course is deeply worrying if you're meant to be the head of a, a global media empire and you appear to have taken the eye off the ball, as he admitted, and know little or nothing about the incident that's gone on. The, the only really unconvincing moment is when they try to convince the committee that news that the news of the world was too small to notice, too small a part of the global corporation to, to, to be worthy of Rupert Murdoch's notice. It may be small in monetary terms, but it's enormous in reputational terms. Going a step further, former employees have completely trashed Murdoch's hands-off policy. I think that the idea that he's a very hands-off owner is surprising. At the Wall Street Journal, he was very much always on the phone with the editor of the journal. The world's wrath does not stop at the family. It extends to the media magnet's prodigy as well. I was aware the News of the World used private detectives, but the final payments are, are authorised by the managing editor. I was deputy features editor and she'd been features editor and she was my direct boss and she keeps saying I knew nothing of it. Yes. And uh, it's so disingenuous. Bureau Report, headlines today.